In South Africa, going without power for weeks is commonplace and this, sadly, isn't made up or the kind of stuff you read about in dystopian novels, but rather a lived reality. Millions are under the crippling grip of load shedding, a term that refers to rolling blackouts orchestrated by state-owned ESCOM, the country's beleaguered electricity giant. Beyond mere inconvenience, these dark hours reveal a much grimmer story, a tragedy rooted in corruption, mismanagement, and rampant crime. ESCOM's demise is more than just failing lights. It's a stark portrait of a country held hostage by ghosts of its own creation. This video digs into the murky depths of ESCOM's implosion, exposing the complex web of corruption, criminal enterprise, and operational negligence that conspired to plunge South Africa into darkness. We'll travel through the coal-dusted hallways of South Africa's political elite, where greed disguised as progress siphoned billions from the grid, leaving a hollow echo of unfulfilled infrastructure promises behind. We'll see communities gasping for air under the suffocating grip of outages, businesses shuttered, and lives disrupted by a darkness not of night, but of systemic failures. Probably the most prominent of ESCOM's dark techniques was state capture. Where powerful individuals, wielding political clout like rusted crowbars, pried open the doors to lucrative contracts, enriching themselves while leaving a trail of shoddy work and inflated costs behind. These were no ordinary backroom deals, they were brazen displays of power, where influence trumped expertise and greed trumped competence. Billion-dollar contracts were awarded to unqualified companies with political ties, resulting in the construction of power plants that resemble unfinished monuments to corruption. Coal of questionable quality, purchased at exorbitant prices, clogged Eskom's furnaces, spewing pollutants and inefficiency into the atmosphere. Maintenance, deemed an unnecessary expense by these parasitic interests, was systematically ignored, resulting in vital infrastructure crumbling like abandoned tombs. The consequences were immediate and devastating. Power plants coughed and sputtered, collapsing one after the other, plunging millions into darkness, while the architects of this economic heist danced in the flickering shadows of stolen riches. State capture was more than just a financial crime. It was a systematic dismantling of a country's energy security, a betrayal of trust reflected in every kilowatt lost due to greed and mismanagement. This is the story we must investigate, revealing the names, networks, and audacious web of deception that conspired to turn off the lights across the country. The tragic story of ESCOM, South Africa's state-owned power utility, unfolds with bitter irony, encapsulated in the skeletal remains of once grand power plants. These structures, now abandoned and rusting under the relentless African sun, serve as poignant reminders of a massive failure to manage a critical national resource. The billions of dollars poured into expanding power infrastructure, which were supposed to usher in a new era of energy abundance, have instead produced a haunting spectacle of decay. In this stark contrast between gleaming steel skeletons and the harsh reality on the ground, ESCOM's tragedy becomes painfully clear. The failure to perform necessary maintenance and operational inefficiencies have turned these power plants into depressing monuments. The machinery, which was once strong and efficient, is now aging prematurely as routine maintenance becomes a distant memory. The result is a cacophony of coughs and sputters as the neglected machinery fails on an alarmingly regular basis, each failure adding to the pervasive darkness that engulfs the national power grid. Mismanagement of coal stockpiles, which are a critical component in power generation, is fueling this descent into chaos. Poor logistics and rampant pilfering have reduced these stockpiles, leaving ESCOM's power station's furnaces starving for fuel. This shortage exacerbates the crisis by transforming what should be dependable energy sources into desperate and struggling entities. Transmission lines, once the lifelines of the power grid, have become an Achilles heel, adding another layer to this tragic story. Overgrown with unchecked vegetation and corroded by years of neglect, these vital conduits are vulnerable to even the slightest breeze, becoming weak points in an already fragile system. The very arteries designed to efficiently distribute power have become liabilities, jeopardizing the stability of an already weakened energy infrastructure. The struggle to maintain order amidst the chaos of an ailing grid was palpable in Eskom's control rooms. Outdated technology, remnants of a bygone era, 
stood as silent witnesses to the utility's inability to keep up with advances in the energy sector. Understaffed teams, stretched thin and burdened by the weight of an impending breakdown, faced the complexities of a system on the verge of failure. Every obsolete component, every crack overlooked in the maintenance routine, and every unlubricated cog represented a potential catalyst for cascading outages, threatening to engulf entire regions in an unwanted shroud of darkness. The difficulties encountered in ESCOM's control rooms went beyond a simple lack of resources. They were indicative of a larger institutional malaise. Bureaucratic inertia, a lack of foresight, and a pervasive culture of complacency had caused critical systems to deteriorate from within. Each flicker of lights and blackout revealed a chilling truth. ESCOM's darkness was caused by more than just external pressures or unforeseen circumstances. Instead, it was the result of a toxic cocktail brewed by neglect and inefficiency, a self-inflicted wound that festered on the body of a once mighty electrical behemoth, now weakened by its own flaws. As ESCOM dealt with internal challenges, an insidious parallel threat emerged from the shadows, manifesting as organized crime exploiting power grid vulnerabilities. Criminal networks like dark tendrils reaching into the heart of the nation's energy infrastructure preyed on ESCOM's operational flaws with predatory precision. This criminal symphony orchestrated fuel theft and sabotage, resulting in a discordant chorus of power outages that weakened the already fragile grid. Coal, the lifeblood of ESCOM's power plants, became a primary target for these criminal enterprises. Gangs used sophisticated methods and insider connections to orchestrate large-scale thefts, siphoning tons of fuel from coal stockpiles. This illegal activity not only made ESCOM scramble for a limited resource, but it also had a significant economic impact. The stolen coal resulted in lost revenue for ESCOM, placing the utility in a precarious financial position. Furthermore, the increased reliance on costly alternatives to compensate for the stolen coal exacerbated the economic strain, resulting in a vicious cycle that contributed to the country's energy problems. The intertwining of criminal opportunism and the utility's internal struggles painted a bleak picture of a once reliable power provider, giving in to both external and internal pressures. However, the damage extended beyond financial losses. Every truckload pilfered meant less fuel to power the furnaces, bringing the grid closer to collapse. The saboteurs then appeared, wielding their tools of darkness with chilling precision. Vandals targeted critical infrastructure, including transformers and transmission lines, plunging entire regions into complete darkness. Motives varied, ranging from rage at rolling blackouts to orchestrated extortion attempts, but the outcome was the same. A worsening energy crisis, a crippled grid gasping for air. The impact went beyond mere inconvenience. Hospitals struggled to keep equipment operational, businesses lost millions of dollars in spoilage, and communities were left vulnerable in the absence of critical services. These were not isolated incidents, they were a grim manifestation of a criminal underworld that thrived on ESCOM's flaws, turning every brief outage into a perverse testament to their power. To truly comprehend ESCOM's tragedy, we must peel back the layers of internal mismanagement and expose the festering wound of external sabotage, in which organized crime played its own macabre melody over the chords of darkness. The damage caused by ESCOM's problems extends far beyond flickering screens and darkened rooms. It burrows into the heart of South Africa's economy, creating a tangled web of devastation that strangles businesses, cripples productivity, and casts a dampening shadow over growth. Every kilowatt loss translates into lost profits, shuttered factories, and grinding industrial gears that sputter into silence. Imagine the assembly line frozen in mid-production, the hum of commerce replaced by the unsettling hush of missed opportunity. This is the harsh reality for many businesses, both small and large, across the country. They bear the brunt of outages, having to navigate the perilous terrain of erratic schedules and unpredictable power outages. Production targets become pipe dreams, deliveries are delayed, and customer trust erodes in the flickering darkness. The ripple effect is devastating, affecting everything from national GDP to individual livelihoods. But the economic impact does not end there. Outages are productivity assassins, stealing valuable time from the nation's workforce. 
Offices operate under dim emergency lights, computers hibernate into forced downtime, and the progress clock ticks agonizingly slowly. The consequences extend beyond lost wages. They deplete morale, stifle innovation, and undermine the very foundations of a competitive economy. In an age of innovation and speed, South Africa, tethered to an unreliable grid, risks falling behind, its economic engine sputtering in the dark, fueled by frustration and inefficiency caused by broken promises and flickering lights. It is a story of wasted potential, stunted growth, and a nation held hostage by a failing infrastructure, with dreams as fragile as fluorescent bulbs dancing in the shadows of uncertainty. As part of Eskom's woes, the threads of social inequality stand out in stark relief. While inconvenience may affect everyone, the true burden of load shedding falls heaviest on the shoulders of poor communities. Their homes, which frequently lack backup generators or other options, become havens of despair when the lights go out. Education suffers as classrooms fall into darkness, homework becomes a fading dream, and digital divides widen with each lost connection. Healthcare facilities, already understaffed, must make life or death decisions in the absence of reliable power. Consider the chilling silence of a darkened maternity ward, with the hum of vital equipment replaced by the frantic pounding of anxious hearts. This is the harsh reality for many people, a poignant reminder that darkness is more than just an inconvenience. It is a weapon of disparity, widening the gap between the haves and have-nots and trapping entire communities in a cycle of vulnerability and hopelessness. Beyond individual tragedies, the impact on essential services spreads, threatening the very fabric of social safety nets. Water pumps fail, leaving sanitation and hygiene precariously balanced on the brink of a blackout. Security systems fail, exposing vulnerable communities to even greater crime risk. Communication channels are shut down, isolating those in need of critical assistance. Each flickering outage serves as a stark reminder of the unequal burden of darkness, a cruel dance in which social privilege casts a long shadow leaving some to navigate the traps of poverty with only the faintest glimmers to guide them. This is more than just a story about power outages. It's a portrait of inequality exposed, a call to action to illuminate not only homes, but also the systemic injustices that keep some in the dark while others bask in the glow of privilege. Due to ESCOM's failures, a storm of public frustration and anger has begun to rage. South Africans, once known for their resilience and optimism, are now dealing with a growing weariness and a gnawing sense of betrayal as their daily lives become subject to the whims of an untrustworthy grid. Every unannounced blackout, missed deadline, and empty promise adds fuel to the fire of public discontent. This frustration manifests itself in a variety of ways, from weary sighs and resigned shrugs to vocal protests and online campaigns demanding accountability. But beneath the frustration is a deeper, simmering anger. Anger at perceived mismanagement, corruption scandals, and the seemingly endless parade of empty statements from both ESCOM and the government. People feel ignored and disenfranchised, with their requests for action lost in the maze of bureaucracy. This rage isn't just directed at ESCOM. It's also directed at a perceived lack of concern, a sense that their plight is just a minor annoyance in the midst of larger political dramas. It's the rage of a nation forced to live in the dark, not only literally but also metaphorically, with their hopes and dreams obscured by the shadows of a failing infrastructure. It's a potent mix of emotions that threatens to erupt into unrest unless addressed with transparency, accountability, and a genuine desire to find solutions. This is more than just a story about technical failures. It's about the citizenry fighting back against neglect, demanding a better future in which reliable power is a basic right rather than a privilege. In the flickering darkness, a spark of collective action has ignited, fueled by frustration and anger, urging ESCOM and the government to emerge from the shadows and into the light of responsibility. The cost of load shedding is measured not only in terms of lost productivity or GDP, but also in shattered dreams, missed opportunities, and even tragically lost lives. Businesses, particularly small ones without backup generators, are in a precarious dance with darkness. Each flicker represents a missed deadline, a lost contract, or a customer turned away, potentially leading to layoffs and closed doors. 
For many, load shedding means losing their jobs, and their hopes for a better future are dashed by the flickering uncertainty of unreliable power. The human cost is even more profound, affecting the most vulnerable, those who rely on life-saving medical equipment or suffer from chronic illnesses. Consider the chilling silence of a darkened ventilator or the frantic scramble for backup options when darkness falls over a hospital ward. For some, these outages are more than just an inconvenience, they can be fatal. Dialysis machines turn off, vital medications spoil in unrefrigerated darkness, and emergency procedures are postponed, leaving hope dangling precariously on the flickering edge of a power grid. Even outside of hospitals, load shedding disrupts medication delivery, jeopardizes oxygen supplies, and plunges the most vulnerable into a terrifying darkness in which illness and uncertainty dance a macabre tango. This is more than just a story about economic struggles. It's a somber portrait of human lives hanging in the balance, a stark reminder that the cost of darkness can be measured not only in lost profits, but also in lost dreams, shattered hopes, and even precious lives. The flickering lights of ESCOM's struggle illuminate not only an energy crisis, but a heartbreaking human tragedy that requires immediate attention and decisive action. At its core, the crisis reveals a deep erosion of trust, fueling frustration and anger that simmer like molten lava beneath the surface. Each blackout serves as a stark reminder of unfulfilled promises and perceived inaction, contributing to citizens' growing sense of alienation from the powers that be. This loss of trust can have serious consequences, eroding the social fabric and fostering populism, unrest, and even political instability. Furthermore, the economic impact of ESCOM's woes spreads, exacerbating existing inequalities and fueling social tensions. Businesses struggle, jobs disappear, and communities already struggling with poverty face new challenges. In this setting, narratives of resentment and blame can easily take hold, potentially pitting different groups against one another in a desperate struggle for limited resources. The darkness cast by ESCOM's failures has the potential to breed social unrest, as desperation and despair pave the way for societal fractures and conflict. Multilateral institutions and developed countries can provide low-interest loans, grants, and technology transfer agreements, significantly lowering the initial costs of implementing renewable energy. Furthermore, technical expertise in grid management, energy storage, and policy formulation can assist South Africa in navigating the transition's complex challenges. The international community's involvement does not entail dictating solutions or imposing external agendas. It is about lending a helping hand, sharing knowledge and resources, and supporting South Africa's own goals for a brighter future based on clean energy and transparency. By banding together, South Africa and the international community can turn the ESCOM crisis from a source of despair to a catalyst for positive change, not just in South Africa, but also in the global fight against climate change and corruption. This collaboration has the potential to illuminate a path to a future in which reliable energy and responsible governance serve as beacons of hope, leading South Africa out of the darkness and into a new era of sustainable progress. The murky waters surrounding ESCOM's woes require the purifying light of transparency. Investigations into corruption and mismanagement must be conducted in complete transparency, with the findings made public. Shadows can no longer hide dubious deals, hidden agendas, and backroom machinations. The South African people deserve to know the truth about the nefarious forces that have plunged their country into darkness. This transparency necessitates independent commissions free of political interference and empowered to uncover every last shred of wrongdoing. Whistleblowers must be protected, and their revelations should be treated as vital sparks in the fight for justice, rather than inconvenient truths. Accountability, the fierce companion of transparency, must move quickly. Those found responsible for ESCOM's problems, from high-ranking officials to shadowy manipulators, must face the full force of the law. No one, regardless of wealth or status, should be spared the chilling grip of justice. Prosecutors must act quickly and decisively, sending a clear message that corruption will not be tolerated. Only by holding individuals accountable can we break the cycle of impunity and rebuild public trust. This is more than just retribution. 
It's about laying the groundwork for a future in which accountability reigns and power serves the people rather than the corrupt. It is about ensuring that ESCOM's tragedy is not just a mark on the nation's history, but a stark reminder of the power of transparency and accountability, a beacon on the path to a more just and equitable future. Beyond the harsh shadows cast by ESCOM's failures, there is a ray of hope, renewable energy. Solar and wind power, once niche players in the energy landscape, now offer a tantalizing path to a brighter, cleaner future for South Africa. Harnessing these abundant natural resources has the potential to diversify the energy mix, reduce reliance on ESCOM's creaking grid, and usher in a new era of sustainable power production. Consider vast solar farms that stretch across sun-drenched plains, their panels converting sunlight into clean, dependable electricity. Consider wind turbines as majestic giants dotting the landscape, their blades gracefully slicing through the air, converting wind's invisible force into tangible power. These visions are not far-fetched. They capture the essence of South Africa's potential for renewable energy dominance. The advantages of this shift are numerous. Solar and wind are far less susceptible to the operational inefficiencies and sabotage that plague ESCOM's coal-fired system. Their decentralized nature relieves strain on the aging grid while providing flexibility and resilience in the face of potential outages. Furthermore, embracing renewables aligns South Africa with the global fight against climate change, establishing it as a pioneer in green energy solutions. The economic potential is equally compelling. Renewable technology investments generate new jobs, attract foreign investment, and boost domestic manufacturing and innovation. South Africa, with its abundant sunshine and strong wind resources, has the potential to become a regional hub for renewable energy production, not only powering its own future, but also exporting clean energy to neighboring countries. However, transitioning to renewable energy requires more than just sunlight and wind. Robust policy frameworks, streamlined investment channels, and skilled workforce development are critical for overcoming current challenges. Addressing grid infrastructure limitations and seamlessly integrating renewable sources into the existing system are critical challenges to meet. To illuminate the path to a renewable future, the government, private sector, and civil society will need to work together. South Africa has a clear choice, remain tethered to a failing past, shackled to the darkness cast by Iskam's woes, or embrace the radiant dawn of renewable energy illuminating a brighter, cleaner future for generations to come. The edifice of ESCOM, once regarded as a symbol of national pride, is now fractured, its foundations eroded by mismanagement and corruption. Restructuring and reform are no longer luxuries, they are urgently required to resurrect this ailing giant. It is time to dissect ESCOM's very structure, identify the cracks and fissures, and rebuild on a foundation of efficiency, transparency, and accountability. Governance reform is a key pillar of this new structure. Dismantling ESCOM's monolithic structure and establishing independent boards for generation, transmission, and distribution could increase competition, accountability, and cost consciousness. This separation of powers, combined with strong oversight mechanisms, can bring much-needed transparency into decision-making processes, reducing the risk of corruption and mismanagement. Another necessary step is to streamline ESCOM's bloated bureaucracy. ESCOM can save money, increase efficiency, and attract much-needed investment by removing unnecessary layers and implementing leaner operational models. Financial restructuring is equally important. ESCOM's crippling debt burden serves as a constant anchor, dragging the company into a perilous abyss. Debt-to-equity swaps, negotiated with creditors, could provide a lifeline relieving pressure and opening the door for new investment. Furthermore, introducing alternative financing models, such as public-private partnerships or green bonds, can help ESCOM diversify its funding sources and free up valuable capital for modernization and growth. However, restructuring is more than just numbers and charts. It must be accompanied by an increased commitment to environmental sustainability. Investing in renewable energy sources and transitioning away from coal reliance is not only a responsible long-term strategy, it is also an important step toward attracting investors and aligning with global energy trends. 
furthermore fostering an innovative culture and embracing technological advancements, such as grid modernization and energy storage, can help ESCOM improve its efficiency and resilience. Restructuring and reform will not be easy. It will require political will, public support, and unwavering commitment from all stakeholders. However, the alternative, clinging to the crumbling remnants of the past, is far more dangerous. Only by shedding the shadows of past failures and welcoming the light of transformative change will ESCOM be able to rise again, illuminating a brighter future not only for itself, but for the entire country. Thanks for watching till the end. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like as well as a sub so more people can view our content.